Let's look at an example where we compute the surface area of a graph. Let's say that we have a graph that is given in terms of the equation z is a function of x and y. So x and y live in some region in the xy plane, and then I have this graph in the z variable. Now, in this case, parametrizing the surface is really obvious. We can use the simple parametrization where g of s and t is simply s and then t and then z as a function of s and t. It's kind of pedantic to use s and t variables for this. Why not just use the old x and y variables that we had. So let's say that g is a function of x and y, and it takes x and y to x and then y, and then z as a function of x and y. That's a simple parametrization. To get the surface area element, we have to take the derivative of g, that is the partial with respect to x, and then the partial with respect to y. The partial of g with respect to x is 1, 0, and then partial z partial x. The partial of g with respect to y is 0 and 1, and then partial z partial y. And with this now, we can take the cross product of these two column vectors, and what do we get in this case? We get minus partial z partial x times i, minus partial z partial y times j, plus 1 times k. To get the surface area element, d sigma, we take the square root of the sums of squares of these components. That's 1 plus partial z partial x squared plus partial z partial y squared, all of that times the area element dx dy. That's it. That's our surface area element. Perhaps this reminds you of something back from single variable calculus when you did, say, a surface of revolution. Maybe think about that a little bit. Okay, let's look at an application of this formula to the area of a hyperbolic paraboloid, something given by the graph z equals x squared minus y squared. This is a, a great looking surface, one of my favorites. Let's say that x and y are constrained to a disk of radius c. The surface area element is the square root of 1 plus partial z partial x squared plus partial z partial y squared dx dy. In this case, partial z partial x is 2x. Partial z partial y is minus 2y. That gives d sigma as square root of 1 plus 4x squared plus 4y squared dx dy. So now all we have to do is integrate this over the disk in the xy plane of radius c. This is really clearly calling out for polar coordinates. If I use the fact that r squared is x squared plus y squared, then my integrand is square root of 1 plus 4r squared times r dr d theta, as r goes from 0 to c, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now, to integrate this, it's pretty clear we should do a u substitution with u equals 1 plus 4r squared, and du equals 8r dr. My new integrand is going to be 1 eighth square root of u du d theta. Now, since there's no thetas involved, I can integrate out the theta first. That gives me theta over 8 from 0 to 2 pi. Then, when I integrate u to the 1 half du, I get u to the 3 halves, all times 2 thirds. I substitute back in u equals 1 plus 4r squared, and then evaluate that as r goes from 0 to c. This gives me, with some algebra, a final answer of pi over 6 times quantity 1 plus 4c squared to the 3 halves. And that's kind of cool. That means that the asymptotics of how this surface area grows is cubic in the radius c. This is like some constant times c cubed. That's kind of interesting if you think about what this hyperbolic paraboloid looks like. That's a fun problem.